To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello and welcome to the WDW Fanboys Podcast. I'm Jonathan Hopkins and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Brett Bennett and Spencer Coleman. And today is December 1st and this will be episode 194. Our show is sponsored by Pixie Vacations. Pixie Vacations is an authorized Disney travel agent. They offer fee-free bookings to Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Lines, and Adventures by Disney. You can find links to their site on our homepage or you can give them a call directly at 678-815-1584. Pretty much. He was pretty much the head of Imagineering. That, though, was one of the best Q&As with anything Disney-related I've cool. ever seen because there was there was a... Uh... Spencer has no idea who made Dreamfinder. <laughs> 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 okay, and you can go and look in other Disney groups, and there'll be a 50, like, 50 reply Oh, God, you post in other groups? That's your first I didn't first post in another group. I didn't post oh. in another group. A 17-year-old podcaster who likes to switch around theme parks posted something about it. And then somebody else... You know that mic can pick up your window voice. Okay. Yeah. I'm just getting frustrated. Yeah. And, uh, and then somebody else was like, Oh, ho, best comment made ever. Ho, ho, ho. And it went on this long thing. Like, oh, hey, Walt Disney, how did you Look at it this way. In a nutshell, in a nutshell I can like guarantee you that most of those people that responded that way were envious that you were exactly, there. Exactly. And they weren't. So just ignore it. Move on. And I, I just didn't but, get it because like, you don't even know the question I asked. And that, that's why. On. But, but insert had, insert question here. I already sent Hopkins the audio file because yes. I was able to get it down on audio. They had they had a, a, a one person that maintained the pace and asked the questions and yeah. kept it flowing very well. Yeah, was, but the yeah. nicest thing was again nobody said anything negative at all. But they didn't have to <laughs> worry about anybody watching over or listening to what they said and, and possibly saying. Because it wasn't for the general public. It wasn't for the general right. public, but it also wasn't run by Disney. Yeah. Right. So there wasn't anybody that pretty much said, don't talk about this, don't mention this, if anyone asks this question to... Because they already know their rules about what they can do anyway. Right, right. So. I mean, that, that's the thing. They, they followed, they, they, they followed, they told the line like they would have during a Disney-sponsored show, but to me it just seemed a little bit more relaxed than some of the Disney ones right. that I've seen. Not that... You can noticeably see people uptight answering questions at a Disney sponsored event, but this here seemed to flow a lot smoother. And the funniest thing was the very, I forget what the first question asked was, and it didn't matter because it was to Marty Sklar, and he completely just answered, he immediately said, Well, let me, before I answer that question, let me just say that Walt was not an anti Semite. Yeah, pretty much. I knew uh, Walt. Why I did was he write friends with Walt. It was why did he write the book? And okay. Okay, and he said, all about their books. All right, and he said, Walt was not an anti-Semite. And he said, I'm proof positive of that. So, you know, putting two and two together, I'm guessing Marty Scalar was Jewish, and Marty Scalar spoke very highly of Walt, and s- seemingly had a very close friendship with Walt. Yeah. I, just, I just thought that was amusing how it was the first thing that came out of his mouth. So, yeah. guessing that, that's, that's one of the... Speaking of books, uh, Jeff hum- Heimbach's book, was uh, at the show. Yep, yeah, for yes. sale. First day. First yeah. day. Walked in there at a bookstore there. And yeah. Right mm-hmm. next to John Hinch's book, so that was very cool. Dark side. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but uh since you've deviated, yeah, one of my favorite book. one of my favorite questions from the, the Q and A session was asked, uh, let's compare the leadership styles between Walt Disney and Michael Eisner. <laughs> and, and nobody said anything for a second and then Lee Cockrell laid into his mic and said Let's not. Yeah. And then lean back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, well, that, that was another thing. They talked about some of the, the different people that they worked with. Right. And they said numerous times, three times at least, a couple of them, that the styles of different people in the past, while they were very great styles as far as getting things done, they wouldn't last a moment in today's workplace right. with lawsuits and how you're supposed to treat other people that are working for you. Right. So it, it's obvious that, it, of course, that was a sign of the times. Well, especially right. now, since and you can't smoke in workplaces, what would Walt do? <laughs> I know. He'd have an outdoor workplace. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the thing was, is it was, it was amusing because it just, again, if you've, if 
you have parents that are in their 50s and 60s and they explain their working experience back then, they'll tell you there are times where women got patted on the behind and it was the norm. It wasn't there, sexual harassment. And it wasn't that far along that there was bars and offices. Yeah. Like, People drank the martini yeah. lunch. How many times they yeah. drank the martini lunch? Yeah. It was it was just very entertaining to hear how things were back then right. and their experiences. Right. I actually again I've got that completely on audio. Yeah. I I listened to a tiny bit of it, it seemed a little bit light, but I'm pretty sure we can we can boost the speakers right. so that it's completely audible when we, we post the link. But it's crazy. I'll to think you look forward to that as well, well. I think what they said is combined the guys had hundred and thirty years of Disney uh, working experience because both Marty Scalar and Jack Lindquist were both there at the start of Disneyland. They both started the same year, mm, yep. Disneyland opened yep. 1955, and they had a good they, rapport going back and forth. Yeah, they oh god, they were they're like each brothers other. almost. Yeah, so it was, it was just crazy to see. And uh, yeah, Marty's looking all right. Jack, Jack's getting old, man. Jack's getting old. He was his speech yeah. was a little slurred. He could still understand him, but I felt bad because nice guy, though. yeah, he was. They were all great, great. And guys. I went before, and I. I we came right at the tail end of the quote unquote press conference. Basically, we just got in and got to go sit with him and ask him questions. So he was getting up and I went and shook his hand, you know, introduced myself. And he was like, I was like, oh, sorry, I missed the whole press conference. And he's like, well, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. I was like, no, I just wanted to meet you. And no, <laughs> just walked you away. what did you say you did? You asked a question. You no, to Marty Scalar, I did. Marty Scalar, I'm sorry. It was yeah. Marty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so, you yeah. know, cool stuff. Cool guys. Yep. Great to see. I missed it. You did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. But, yeah. What else? I don't know, man. Lots of stuff. So much you can't even comprehend. It was, uh, it was definitely an enjoyable three days. It was a very fun experience. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to be re-invited back next year. I'm sure we will. We're, We're already on there. We'll ourselves again. We didn't do uh, anything or say anything that... Put us in there. We'll be going with Not our. Until they listen to this. We'll get press passes with our Universal podcast. That's <laughs> uh, it. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, not to, I was asked that uh, during the event. Somebody had messaged me on Facebook and said, Why are you at IAPA? Let me but, guess who messaged you that. Yeah, you can guess. Because you're not here. Yeah, exactly. How's that and for an answer? I, I just didn't even know how to react to that question. Yeah, uh, of course. That's how I knew it was. Uh, it's like, how, what, what? Why are you in Rhode Island? Yeah, I don't understand. It's I'm here I'm, because uh, we're here. Actually, the question is, why aren't you here representing one of the shows you change to every other week? Now, who's um, representing whatever that show is today? Yeah. No negative. We're no negative. <laughs> but um, he loves the attention. Is, he knows it. This is my first trade show I've ever been to, and certainly first anything on the scale. And I didn't know what to expect going into it. Uh, you know, I thought attraction park or amusement parks and attractions. I thought like it was gonna be like you know, Disney was gonna put something on like D twenty three scale, like Disney parks. Yeah. And Universal will have something. Sea World will have something. I didn't know that it was just gonna be all like manufacturers and not yeah. anybody that actually put anything out. I saw quite a few representatives from Disney and Wizarding World, Harry Potter, a couple guys from there. And of course, the different people. You and know, you're, different you're, you're probably have a lot of imagineers and everything walking around, yeah, and looking exactly. at different things sure. and getting ideas. But yeah, see, yeah, see, I wasn't. See, I'm used to in my old job going to uh, food service trade shows, so I'm kind of used to the whole trade show thing, you know. And I've gone to computer trade shows and everything, and it's very just people selling their wares, you know, yeah, yeah. the flea market for entertainment. Well, also too, they want a, a lot of them, like especially the big guys. They're, they they need to be there so they can make an appearance. Yeah, but uh, but they're not show. doing any deals there. Right. It's you know, a lot of it's show. Yeah. Right. Like, just every Idiom's not there. freaking selling a roller coaster on the show floor. Right. I mean, Cedar Point's going to come to him and draw it a long contract for yeah. a $40 million coaster. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But, um, oh, big. Jumping back to the Q&A, oh, okay. um, I forget who said I think it was Jack, but uh, one of the... One of the things when they were talking about some of the people that they, they worked under, he was saying how he would always make sure it was understood that there are no bad ideas. There may be an idea that's presented that isn't, isn't going to work, and they, they see that immediately, but they never call that person out 
as having a bad idea or having a stupid idea. You're an idiot. He, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't even use that word. It, what he was getting to was he was pointing out how on numerous occasions somebody would say, well, why don't we do X, Y, Z? And then they sort of say, well, you know, not not really, not right now, not this time. They, they'd say no without saying no because a couple days later someone else would say, you know what, so-and-so brought up, why don't we do X, Y, Z? And we didn't see it as a feasible option, but what if we do ZYX? And then it planted the seed, the seed grew, and then they had right. something. So that because that initial idea was birthed from something they didn't think was going to work, that's why he made it a point right. to express to everybody there are just no bad ideas. Right. Very cool. But uh, I'm not trying to think of any other... There weren't a lot of uh, huge announcements made. Polar Coaster was a big one. If you followed anything on there, you might have you've probably seen Polar Coaster. Hey, it was in the local news last night. Uh, Polar Coaster is a big thing. Coming to Florida, what I think was like 560 feet tall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's basically one of those giant revolving towers with a roller coaster going all the way around it. Yeah. yeah. Like, ba- basically, you you have a, a spire in the middle with the elevator system. And then it's like a space the the tower, yeah, the space needle part. But then, like, it would be a cylinder of roller coaster track just spinning around. What's yeah. the biggest one like that? I mean, the roller coaster up the top. Stratosphere. Well, that Stratosphere. roller coaster got pulled out, but anyways, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. They added two other rides to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, oh, yeah. Now coming to Florida is People, what they've been saying. Which I don't know, man. There's two airports, and you know, you got MCO, and then you've got the executive airport. That's always been a big problem with building any tall structures in Orlando. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Some people are saying, well, which theme park is it going to go to? And I was, um, when I was walking around with uh, Robert Bearden. Epcot. The other day. That's what Epcot it. needs. Well, no, because it would, it would just throw Project Gemini, dude. We're going to get this roller coaster yeah. inside space. You should shut your mouth about Project Gemini. <laughs> He's gone. That doesn't exist anymore. Space Shepard roller coaster. Yeah. What did we get out of Project Gemini? Crap. Last year? <laughs> Mask gear. Yeah. Just Anyways, sure. Robert Beard was saying probably Daytona. Because people were saying Wish Gardens, and one of the uh, Walt Disney World, Universal. Stop and <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the theme parks, I mean, again, none of the theme parks really have a fit for it. Right. Legoland, it might go Sea there. World, they already have a tower. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, anyway, sea World, Universal, Walt Disney World, Busch Gardens. Gatorland. Um, but Bearden seems to think that Daytona. I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't, I I don't think it'll go it. in Orlando because also Orlando has enough to compete with that. It'd have to stand off by itself. Right. And the thing at the top, the the center at the top, it's going to be at least one restaurant and multiple shopping yeah. areas. See, I could see stores. like like Daytona. I could see yeah. because the view right. there would be spectacular. I was going to say recently in the past year in Pensacola, they built one of those giant Ferris wheels. Yeah. I thought that's Pensacola. what they were building here in Orlando was a giant Ferris wheel. I don't know. Or was that? Or am I thinking Vegas? I know Vegas, they're finally like building Ohio. one. No, no one builds anything in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> except, except for distrust ex- and hate. Except for broken dreams. <laughs> yeah. Crushed souls. Uh, our main export is vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D crippling depression. <laughs> At least we're not Detroit. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, uh, 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 are, are you guys got anything else about... Uh, I don't know. We'll come back to it. IPA. IAPA. IAPA. They need to come up with a better name. That's like just a long, like small condensed acronym. IAPA. Yeah. I think it was his name. So so last week, I thought it was funny that I actually, you know, we had a couple listeners that knew what the heck I was talking about since Spencer's 12 years old. A couple of Disney shows that like popped in my head. Uh, and I actually had to look it up because I remembered it, but I didn't remember what the hell the name of it was, and I haven't seen it in so long. Um, but there was a show called The Hundred Lives of Black Jack Savage. Racist. Spencer. Sorry. Black Jack's not racist. And uh, the uh, show, the only reason I remember it is the whole premise of the show was stupid. But the thing I remembered, it had this boat. That was like a high speed boat that looked like a uh, SR seventy one Blackbird, but it was on water. It was really cool. Now, if anyone remembers that show, it came out in. Uh, it was only on between March thirty first and May twenty sixth of ninety one. So uh, I was like eleven. I re- 
correct, please tell me someone remembers this. Uh, I remember, I think I remember a special that Eisner was on. Like they were talking about the making of it and kind of what the show was going to be. Kind of how Disney used to do when they would come yeah. out with a new show. Yep. They would have Eisner or someone come on and kind of explain what the heck it was. Yeah. And um, I want to say I remember they, they showed the boat. And apparently the boat was on the Backlot Tour for a bit. Ah. Hmm. In uh, like 2002, I think. Weird. Um, but I remember they had a remote control model of that boat for certain shots. And I remember, and maybe, maybe it's drugs. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> but uh, I want to say that they had that remote control boat. I remember I wanted it. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm way off. Then there's another one that was really obscure that I remembered. I didn't remember, but as I was going through and then I started looking up other Disney shows. Yeah. Um, and I lost the page. Stand oh. by, everyone. There was another show. It came on uh, January 17th, 1988 through the 24th. There's only two episodes aired. It was called Earth Star Voyager. That one I remember. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was such a it was it, it was a space show and everything else. This was back when Disney like would just throw anything at the wall and see yeah. what stuck. Yeah. You know? And, and there's just a lot of a lot of stuff that Disney made, like live action shows that just faded I away. The previews for Earth Star Voyager. Thinking, yeah. This is this looks really cool. I want to see this. Yeah. And then next thing I know it was gone. Where oh, the hell did it go? Yeah. yeah. That is the longest Wikipedia page for something I've ever seen that has two episodes. Oh, oh, it's got a huge cult following. They've actually people have actually made their own versions of this. Nice. Oh my god. That's how you know See, it's, stuff like that gets two episodes, manimal yeah. the whole season. What's wrong with this? Manimal. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, that's uh that, I, I, does anyone else remember that show? If so, please send us. If you remember the show, in. let us know. We'll have you on for a guest. We, we could spend 20 minutes or so talking about it. I'll go drink myself. Yeah. yeah. I'm not old enough to drink. Yeah, none of those shows Spencer remembers because Spencer did not exist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's actually amusement parks that we go to now that did not. Well, actually, you're older than Animal Kingdom, right? Yes. 97, right? What? I was born in 92. Okay. 92. Well, that's what I meant. 97 was when Animal Kingdom came. So. No. 99. No? 98. 98. You people don't know anything. Shut up, please. Because Bugs Life hadn't come out yet, yet they had the Tree of Life. Oh, that's they right. Had... Which they talked about, Oh, they about talked too. about that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, did they? Yeah. What they, they said? They said something. I don't know. I think it was Eisner talking about his synergy and how he just had these crazy ideas. Like, they were trying to figure out the show to put in the tree. Or, they were trying to figure out something to do with the tree or something. And... Eisner left the room because he was like, we're not doing anything. I'll be back later. And then he walks in like another minute later and says, do bugs live in trees? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Do bugs live in trees? Yep. <laughs> and they said, really? And uh, who, yeah. who, who was the Pixar guy? He said, go talk to him. What's his name? Uh, Rickon, uh, Lasseter. Joe Rose. Oh. John Lasseter. Oh. Yeah. He said, um, oh, uh, Lasseter's Pixar, doing yeah. a movie about bugs. Go talk to him. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> do bugs characters. live in trees? Yes. <laughs> and he yes. ran... Yes. The Disney company. Yeah, yeah. And he wonders why people give him crap for his tenure at Disney. The, oh. uh, that's the other thing. How many parts are there? And the, that's the other thing. I was thinking about Eisner, and, you know, we know they hate for him and everything. But I got to tell you, man, like, I miss the old shows when he would pop on. Yeah. He'd be in the parks or something. Okay. Yeah. And I think they, they kind of they touched on this a bit and because they didn't, they didn't really say anything bad about him. Yeah. And... They said what I truly believe is that Michael Eisner did great things for the Disney company, mm -hmm. production wise, movie wise, TV yeah. show wise. Yeah, oh yeah. Theme parks, no, not at all. Yeah, but movies and everything, yeah. he brought back to life the yeah. whole Walt Disney Pictures. And Which, the expansion of the hotels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. too. Yeah, he, he well, made yeah. hotels so that everybody could come. Yeah, and stand see, like park. Iger, you don't see him. I the here's here's the difference is Eisner wasn't great like Walt. But he was accessible to everyone, like yes. Walt on TV. Yep. Iger, most people who are not Disney fans probably have, that just come to the parks, have no idea who the hell runs the company. Right. Iger's a money man. That's why he's really good for the shareholders, but 
anything else, uh, you know, he ma- he's made good calls that have helped the company, Pixar, uh, Avengers, um, Avengers, Marvel, Marvel and then Wars. Star Wars. That will pay off in the future, and yep. then more of the ties with. Uh, is it ABC that they own? Yes. Yeah. The the kind of restructuring on that, you know. So he he's done some good, um, and again, like I I think with some management changes, I think Walt Disney World could do better, like they, Disneyland. They just made a lot of that. Yeah. Recent changes. Yeah, they just fired a bunch of people. Yeah, a nice. bunch of uh, upper level management yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Right about that. Yeah, and hopefully we're still waiting on George Calabritas to start to shine. Yeah, he's still I, he's still in his newbie phase. The, the, yeah, he's still new, and I think the problem is is they've screwed him by throwing my magic bands at him in this next gen yeah. project, and he's kind of got to get that out the door, right. you know, before Tom Staggs has a coronary. Yeah. Uh, now, now speaking of magic bands, we actually have a listener, listener question. question from Melissa Weiss. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Weiss. Weiss. Okay. I'll say Weiss. Okay. One of the Write us right. back and let us know if that's how you say it. She will, I'm sure. Weiss. Weiss. But, um, yeah, since she uh, she's actually going to be returning to Walt Disney World in January, so yeah, let's yeah, answer yeah. this now so she has some time to... Ooh, Spencer, you're probably going to be able to answer most of this, but okay. the question was, um, she's going to be returning to Walt Disney World in January in time, she thinks, for the new Fast Pass Plus system to be in full force or at least up and running at the Contemporary. Right. Have any of us done any testing on the new system? If so, have you reviewed it in your podcast? Sort of. If you would point her in the right direction, which podcast? This one, she wants to know how honest we are about the goings on in Disney and our feedback. And she finds us funny and entertaining. Thank you. How, how honest do you are? Well, let's put it this way. First, let me answer that in two parts. Uh, as far as going to the contemporary, you'll be able to get a fast pass. If you're staying on property, you'll get a fast pass because all the hotels are now... And you're not the, the magic band. And at Contemporary, you will get the most Fast Pass Plus. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be staying at Deluxe Lover Resort. If we do see a full, out by, full roll out by January, which is possible, depending on if you're like January 1st, probably not yet. Yeah. If you're late January, you're probably going to see a full roll out by then, maybe. And as far as like, uh, uh, what was it, truths or honesties and everything, most of the stuff that we say, some of it's, you know, out there and everything, but most of it's our personal opinion or we don't get paid our views or anything like that. So, Take us with a grain of salt. You know, we're we're entertainment. We don't smoke here. <laughs> you smoke, smoke on the patio. I smoke. <laughs> from, what ah. I've, from what I've heard about the Fast Pass, the first starting was a little rough, but it's been it's been getting in bed, better and better constantly. And then Disney's they dropped getting, the bomb last week. Disney's getting the, all the feedback they can about what needs improvement. They are uh, improving yeah. instantly as soon as they get knowledge of what the problem may be. Right. I'm hearing that the fast passes are working for reserving with the magic bands. Right. It's working out pretty well. When I was hanging out with the people from Pixie Vacations, the few times they were down here, every time they used their fast pass on their magic bands, every time it worked flawlessly yep. for them. So, so they're they're working out the kinks. Right. They're it's definitely fun. working out the kinks. I guys. haven't heard a lot of horror right. stories. They anymore. want they want this to work and they want it to work bad. So no matter oh, yeah. what the end result is going to be this is going to work as flawlessly as possible for Disney. Just when is that going to be? But it's it's getting better and better in leaps and bounds. Right. Oh, also, uh, we've kind of made a mistake. You know, a couple of times we talk about how it's inflated to three billion. Um, we've talked to a couple of people that kind of know other people that are in the know, and it's really not that bad. It's it's still about a billion dollars. Oh, that's is what they've spent on. It hasn't really gone that bad over budget. Um, so. We're sorry. We make a correction eight months later. <laughs> right. Retracted. That's why we get press passes because we're That's so it. accurate. Yeah. We're, we're like ac- ac- accurate. See? <laughs> we're like Fox News. Uh, we do all the fact oh, checking first. Oh, Lord. Or CNN, we're going to report all the deaths and then go <laughs> here back. Oh, wait, the, just kidding. There's only five. Here comes the hate mail. There could be two million deaths. There was 115 deaths. Yeah. <laughs> what was I going to say? Um, no. Uh, well, you I've actually been, used the. the Magic I've used Magic Band. Band. Yeah. I didn't get to use Fast Passes because that was before the time that I could add my ticket media to it. It was very weird, very weird at the yeah. beginning. And um, but uh, I've, I, the, the, the experiences, whoa, the experiences that I had were, were very good with the fast or with the Magic Band. It was weird because I stayed at Art of Animations, and you know it was easy to get into the room, easy yeah. to pay for things. 
And then to get into the pool, though, you still had to... It was at the big blue pool. And you use a key one. card? And you, no, you had to use your magic band. Oh. But I had to wave it like five times uh. to get it to work on the sensor. But uh, I was like, can somebody just come press this button over here and let me in on the other side? Well, the, the in conjunction with the bands is also the mobile app for the Android right. and Apple I devices. Uh, I've had uh, some of our friends have actually done where you can trade if, if basically on the, the, the site and on the device, uh, you can add friends like in yep. your group of people that you travel with. So if you've got a fast pass, actually, you can bump it to them. And same with tickets too. Actually, if I wanted to give you my ticket for not uh, for uh, um, very merry, very merry Christmas, I could actually assign it to you, and you really? could use it. Yeah, oh, it makes sense. So it's kind of there's there, and the app they they've been updating it, and it's been a little bit faster here and there, and a couple right. of tweaks and everything. Um, as far as AP members, there hasn't been really any details of when we're getting them. Could happen now. Yeah, I tried. Because if you stay at a resort during testing or right now or whatever, yeah. and you have a magic band, you can link your AP to it, and you can it'll stay linked to it even after you leave. And your mm. credit card will also stay linked to it as well, as long as you use it. And then you can go on the app, you can go online, and deactivate your magic band anytime. Okay. Remove your permissions for it. And yeah. But uh, I've seen, I've been with a few people coming down as they use Fast Pass Plus. And, you know, as of right now, you can only use the one park. And that, that was a little bit of a bummer for some people, but... Uh, I was with my friend Cameron and Kevin, my friend's Cameron and Kevin, and they had their fast fans passes. Of the show. Yes, fans of the show. Fans of me. <laughs> Not true. But uh, <gasps> they went, to, we went to Epcot one day, but their fast pass plus reservations were all for Magic Kingdom. And it was like middle of the day. And so we went to one of the kiosks at the fountain, and um, they just tried to switch it, and the lady was like, oh no, or since you said you were going to be Magic Kingdom today. Or have to completely, you know, just delete all of your Fast Pass Plus reservations oh. and start over. But they press the delete button or whatever, clear it or whatever, and then as soon as they went back into Epcot, it gave them test track soar and okay. nice things or something like that. You know, I mean, of course, this was a couple months ago, so it was still not... Yeah, because Epcot now is doing, what, the groupings yes, of yeah, attractions? Yes, and that started, what, this past week, last week, yeah. where they have, you can choose one or two from this one, and then one or two from these groups. Yeah. So it's like... You can only choose one from like Test Track, Soar, and something like that. Which again, before everyone gets in an uproar about it, and you know, like I said, I, I got called out on Facebook, and I had a talk, and I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm completely right, I was in the wrong. Um, you saw I, Disney again. I don't use Fast Pass, uh, but I don't think that all this stuff is permanent. They're testing all this stuff right of now. Course. They've got it. I, it I, sucks for people that come down here right now. It, it truly does. I, I feel for people that have to come down here and have to deal with all this because they it's it's kind of half working and half not. Yeah. So with when it comes to these groupings and everything, hell, who knows when they fully release this, they might not even have those tiered groupings. You That's know, what I'm be, saying. You know, I don't, never don't believe don't for one minute. to anything. Because it yeah. would be completely different once it's finalized. Because that's the cool that it's actually one of the cool things about this system is once it's fully up, it's it's not stuck to anything. It's all you just change a piece of code and you know, and change your rules right. and send some training out and the system's mm -hmm. changed. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't think that it was going to stay one park forever. I believe you're going to be able to do park hopping. Yeah, because they're still going to want to sell those tickets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but crap, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. But when they roll out this tiered system that they're testing right yeah. now, everybody that had currently booked their fast passes got knocked out of the system. Said oh. you need to reschedule all your fast pass pluses because we just changed it. Yeah. Yeah. Not well, and good. Th and that's well, but that's the thing. Is it still? It's still in beta testing. Yeah. It's not officially they, released. They don't roll it out to every single person in every yeah, single resort. I know. These kind of stunts. I know. But they got. They've got to do real world testing. That's that's the problem. Is it sucks. They've done. You can only do so much closed testing. But you got to get real world numbers, and you kind of have that cutoff point where. Okay, let's see where it goes. Right. Yep. You know. Yeah. Sink or swim. Yep. So that's kind of the phase that they're in now at the parks is we've got it to the point where a thousand Duffies aren't getting charged to your room. So <laughs> let's kind of roll it out to every resort. Yeah. And actually some resorts are going to go 
and one step further and oh. full just fast pass only and no world key card. Yeah, magic yes. Full magic yeah. Full magic yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's too many acronyms. Just make it one thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they're already, um, already alone. I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Are, uh, don't have the key yeah. cards anymore. Yeah. I was going to say, and I, I saw a story of somebody the other day that said, we don't want to use magic bands and got hassled by the people at check-in at the front desk because they only wanted to use key to the world cards and they were like, they oh, don't no, have them. No, no, no. Well, no, no, it's not a resort that still had them too. They were like, you sure? No, this, your resort's going to be so much better. You need to do this. Like, we, I don't know if we can do this. And like, See, they, they got to be careful that they still have to treat the guests yeah. with the respect the guest wants and, again, relay the information that things are changing, maybe something's not available, but don't make it sound like a used car sale. Yeah. And you, you've got to work with the guests because, again, we're the first ones to point out people don't like change, especially theme park enthusiasts. Right. They don't like change. They you, want change, but then they don't like it when it shows up. You right? buy now. Yeah. Yeah, so. so it's, 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 yeah. We're working on eggshells. Oh, oh, one one little thing. Uh uh, more Cute Stories, Volume 2, Animators and Imagineers, narrated by Rolly Crump, uh, will be coming out November 26. Uh, so you can go to bambooforestpublishing.com or Amazon or iTunes. Amazon, throw a link. Yes, throw a link and iTunes, throw a links when I <laughs> manage to throw them up in a timely fashion. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, wait, quiet, you. What links have you put up? Nothing. Lots. You're just eye candy for the show. I miss eye candy 2013. I can, re I can replace you with a shell oh, script. Man, that, the, the, the one uh, with the corn maze. Yeah, that's, that's, that all of them. Because that was, the, the company that was making the inflatables was eye candy inflatables. And so I saw even inside they had a <laughs> display. They were wearing sashes. Their booth babes yeah. they were wearing sashes that said miss eye candy inflatables. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was pretty good eye candy inflatable one time. I told her I won the she first runner up for that last together. year. Yeah, because then I got a second place in that last year. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she was amused. Uh, that's funny. Anyways, a um, couple other things. Tim Miller, we still need your Amazon purchases information so we can get you out your shirt. Tim the shirt Miller. You want. So get us that information as soon as possible. We will have your shirt sent to you. And Darren Maroney. When you get here, let us know when you're here, and I'm sure we'll be able to hook up. And oh, yeah. He messaged me the other day. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Forgot about that. We'll definitely be able to meet up with you when you get here. Just let us know when you're here. Yeah. I probably won't be because I'll probably end up being work. Take a shot. December 34th. <laughs> we're in buds. Um, what else, man? What, uh, Christmas is fast approaching. Yes. Holiday season. Buy all your gifts through our Amazon link. Yes. Uh, Cyber Monday is Christmas coming tree is up at But we're also not talking about Christmas because it's still freaking November. Shut Get through Turkey Christmas Day first. Everywhere. There's, I think all After Thanksgiving is when Christmas exists. Yes. Sure. I will not put up any decorations until that time. Oh, I, yeah. I will tell you this. I was, at my, I was at my cousin's house, and she lives in a place called Fish Hawk, which on Surrey is <laughs> funny because it says Fishcock. <laughs> or at least that's what it sounds like. Anyway, she lives in this really nice part of Fish Hawk, like really expensive houses. But I'm looking, driving through, and all these Christmas lights up. But they're they're very um, fancy Christmas lights. They're, they're because they they have a homeowners association. They're real nitpicky. I mean, these are they probably um, paid somebody to put those lights. up. They did, yeah. My my cousin did it. She she put made her poor husband go up and do it. But they have uh, it's just white lights, and you can have like garland or whatever. But then they got this reef and everything. But I'm sitting out there smoking because I smoke and. Smoke. Um, we're going to be deleting it from your life story yes. when the movie comes out. I was like, I'm be deleting a lot it's stuff. 79 degrees at night, and you got lights up. I just don't feel like it's no, Christmas. No. Like well, this, Florida. Yeah, because this is my first Christmas away from home, my first Thanksgiving away from home. You know, so it just doesn't seem oh, like... You? Quiet. Like, what? I spend Christmas with my family. It's a I'm teasing. Um, Restaurant's Christmas with his cat. Yeah, because that's to, what normal people do. I spoke my family in five years. I spoke um, my mom in 12 years. Oh, come on <laughs> now. <laughs> that's that, so wrong. That was wrong. That was that's so wrong. That was so wrong. so wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> For those who don't know, Spencer's mom has passed away 12 years ago. Actually, it was like 13, 14. 13? 14. 14. Oh, God. So, why only 12 years? Ago? I don't know. I was trying to think at the time. Because <laughs> you didn't speak to it. You're like, you're dying. I don't need to talk to you. Oh, God, you stop that. Now I feel bad. <laughs> this is where the show has taken a, a very <laughs> bad turn. This is what turn. it uses people. I think. Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but 
I'm trying to make copies feel better, but I don't want to make too many jokes. So, Britt, did you see the Rick Shaw's? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh. And for those who don't know, uh, Hopkins' extremely good friend Rick died. Yes. <laughs> yes. I haven't talked to him in three years. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh. Talk to him when you're alone in your room. And just... I hate you people. <laughs> I seriously do. Oh my god. This is this is taking a turn. On that note. Uh, on that note, yeah. You guys got anything else before we so. we totally <laughs> ruin this? No. All right. You yeah. This, this would definitely be a second part, but. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for listening. And since yeah. this will be the second part that you're listening to, uh, I hope everyone had a th- magical Thanksgiving celebration Certainly, extravaganza. Yeah. With your family, I hope you didn't kill anybody the day next day. When yes, you're being thankful by oh, buying God. stuff. Oh yeah, meat. Black Friday. Holy yeah. crap! Oh, idiots! Um, e- idiots waiting out line for a, a Xbox One yesterday. Xbox. At uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, what was it? It was like ten o'clock in the morning. They were still waiting. Uh, like they just started lining up. I don't understand why people don't pre-order things. Yeah, why not? I would rather. Care. Okay, when I got my iPhone five, I yeah. didn't want to wait in the line. I didn't. So I woke up at three in the morning and pre-ordered it. I had no problem waking up for five minutes at three o'clock in the morning, pressing a few buttons, and See, going back to sleep. Yeah. Getting it in the mail that day. You didn't even have to do that because you're Spencer. You woke up in the morning and walked someone out, and someone was there saying to give you one. Here, like, hey. would you like this new iPhone? <laughs> I don't need it. Here, here's what you do if you want an Xbox One, which you should have done. Is she used our Amazon links? Sign up for Amazon Prime with second day shipping free, three ninety nine for next day, and then bought it on their pre order. There you okay, go. Say so somebody did that for the WW Kingdom Cast. Pre ordered an Xbox One and a PS Four. Oh my god! Amazon links. Nice. And then sold the PS Four. <laughs> Not really? To a coworker. Yeah. Funny. Nice. Nice. Well, that's pretty funny. Yeah. So yeah, please feel free to buy all the things on our Amazon and then just sell them to other people. Yes. Yeah. Figure out what the new hot item is going to be this year. Because I really want that carousel and the greaseless fryer. (laughs) Really. I think the carousel comes with um, one of the models. I think we can retrofit the greaseless fryer onto the carousel. There we go. Yeah, but then I might throw up. Like, I just, I've ate too much and it's spinning and (laughs) whatever. Oh, well. Actually, that's what we should do. We should, um, when I post the link of that. Spinning ride that we went on, yeah. we'll film Hopkins watching the video clip. Like oh two girls god! Up reaction. Yeah, it will be because I can't <laughs> deal with that very often. <coughs> All right, so okay. that's it. Uh, yeah, now for listening. Happy Turkey Day! It's yes, real. It's a good episode. Yes, enjoy it. Till uh, next week or week after that, whenever we Til record again. Time. Til All right, and that was the time when we dance. Well, it looks like that'll be it for this week's episode. If you have any questions or comments for us, you can send us a message using our Contact Us link on our homepage, or you can send us an email directly at questions at wdwfanboys.com. If you'd like to help us promote the show, every post on our page offers a one-click link to Facebook and Twitter. Just click the links on our site to let your friends know that you enjoy our podcasts and blog posts. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at wdwfanboys, or join our Facebook group, at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WDW fanboys. And while you're at it, head over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. And remember, if you're shopping on Amazon.com, don't forget to navigate to our Amazon links on our homepage. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help us out because every purchase you make through our links lets us receive a portion of your purchase price, which in turn helps improve show content and helps with running costs. And remember, if you do spend more than $1,000 worth of merchandise in a 12-month period, let us know, and we'll send you a free Fanboys t-shirt. Have a good one. Don't forget to join us again next week.